Ichthyosaurs were the kind of dolphin-like marine reptiles that lived alongside the dinosaurs. They weren't dinosaurs themselves, but like I said, they evolved at the same time during the Mesozoic, the Age of Reptiles, and they just happened to move to the water and become really dominant there for a long time. And they first evolved during the Triassic, around the same time as the dinosaurs. And it's been thought that really the Permian-Triassic extinction really let them do that diversification into the water. The Permian-Triassic mass extinction was absolutely dreadful for life, especially in the oceans. Potentially as much as 95% of all species in the oceans just died out. So that's entire lineages of it, organisms that are just gone. And it seems like from the ashes of this, the first ichthyosaurs started to move into the water and then diversify after that extinction. Some of the more recent ones that have been found, like Simospondylus youngorum from 8 million years after this extinction, also suggest that their rise to prominence in the oceans was pretty swift. Essentially, they probably started as pretty small organisms and then very quickly just ballooned up to massive sizes and became very dominant predators in the oceans. However, there's a new fossil that's actually changing some of our perspective on that. And it's super, super incomplete. It doesn't have a species name or anything, even a genus name. But we can tell based on the structures in the fossil that it was an ichthyosaur, even though it's just a few fragmentary bones and some articulated vertebra. But again, these vertebra have all of the trademark characteristics of an ichthyosaur, but they come from just after this extinction. This fossil is from about 2 million years after the extinction, which I know 2 million still sounds like a lot, but when you look at the fossil and especially look at it in detail, you can tell this organism was already well equipped to go all the way out into the water. It had been thought that during this time, the ichthyosaurs would have been still pretty small and mostly just kind of hanging around the water not necessarily going all the way out into deep parts of the ocean or totally marine settings. Instead, based on this find, no, they were already in the water and already going out into the ocean by this time. What this might mean is that they potentially evolved even earlier than previously thought. The main arguments for this are when they looked at the microstructure of the bone, it had a lot of those ichthyosaur traits, which means it probably had a pretty similar metabolism. And that means it probably had a very similar lifestyle. That means things like being mostly warm-blooded. Some ichthyosaurs even developed blubber. Having just a generally faster metabolism, they were growing faster, and of course, going out into the open water. Something that, again, this was pretty much off the table as far as we knew about ichthyosaurs at this time. Now, in the paper that actually looked at Simospondylus youngorum, they essentially estimate that the divergence time for the ichthyosaurs to become as diverse as they were later in the Triassic than this new fossil was about 18 to 2 million years. So somewhere in that time, the first ichthyosaur showed up and then they diversified quickly. And this one essentially helps to argue that it was probably a longer amount of time. Rather than the ancestors to ichthyosaurs being kind of around the water when the extinction happened, and then moving fully into the water after the extinction and then diversifying into what they became, it's more likely that their ancestors were already in the water, became more adapted to the water, survived that extinction, and stayed in the water and diversified into what the ichthyosaurs became. So they were already in the water by the time of that extinction. There's also some interesting look at some of these other fossils and the kind of assemblages we have, because it actually suggests that ichthyosaurs like this new one might have actually come from more temnospondyl dominated environments, which generally is going to mean more fresh to brackish water. Temnospondyls were these super large amphibians, or at least amphibian relatives, and they were really, really dominant during the Permian, at least in a lot of the waterways. It wasn't until the Triassic, when after that extinction a lot of them died out, that you start to see a kind of shift into being more reptile dominated freshwater habitats. So what this means is that probably the first ichthyosaurs were somewhat ichthyosaur-like in the streams around certain areas of the world around Pangaea. And then eventually the extinction happened and the temnospondyls became smaller in number because they would have picked up more of the kind of environmental pollutants that happened and occurred during that extinction. From that then, these ichthyosaurs or ichthyosaur relatives were able to become more aquatic and eventually move out to the oceans and start diversifying even more. But again, it really just kind of throws this wrench into what we thought we knew where, hey, yeah, they totally only diversified after the extinction. Looks like they were kind of already on their way there, but that extinction really did help them just, you know, jump the gun compared to many other animals that eventually did start to go into the oceans. They just happened to do it first because they did it before the extinction even happened. 